Welcome to this video on clouds and climate change. My name is Herma Russenberg. In the previous models we have seen that clouds cool the earth by some 10 degrees on average. We have also seen that the number might change due to global warming. We do not yet know how much, but it can be quite significant. An important element in the clouds and climate puzzle is the cloud lifetime. How long does the cloud stay in the atmosphere? Well, clouds can disappear after evaporation and after rain. In this module, we will talk about rain. Rain is falling on large droplets of a few millimeters. We have seen that the cloud droplet forms around an aerosol that attracts water molecules. That process only results in droplets of approximately 10 micrometer, much smaller than a typical raindrop. So how do we get a raindrop? There are two basic mechanisms. One, turbulent motions inside the cloud let the droplets collide and coalesce. This results in larger droplets, and when they are big enough, they fall out, out of the cloud as rain. Two, the bergeron Finteisen process. To understand this process, we have to go back to the clausius clapeyron curve of water vapor saturation. We have discussed this before, but now we will also have a look at temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. What do we see there? There are two lines, one for liquid water and one for ice. Yes, also below the freezing point, liquid water can exist. We call this supercooled water. The saturation curve of ice is lower than the one of water. Now suppose we have a liquid water droplet in an atmosphere where the water vapor pressure is smaller than the saturation pressure of liquid water, but higher than the one of ice. The liquid will evaporate. Now let's, an ice, let's, let's add an ice particle in the same environment, close to the liquid droplet. The ice will not evaporate, because the air is saturated with respect to ice. Instead, evaporation of the liquid droplet has increased the number of water molecules in the environment of the ice particles, and the ice particle can grow even more. Above the saturation curve for liquid water and ice, liquid and ice can coexist. But when the particles get too close to each other, the ice will grow at the expense of the liquid water. The bergeron Finteisen process is very common in the atmosphere. In so-called mixed phase clouds, ice and liquid coexist. The ice particles grow at the expense of the liquid droplets and large snow crystals can be formed. When these particles are large enough, they fall down. On the way to the surface, they pass the height where it's zero degrees and they melt into raindrops. Because ice is involved in this process, it is also called cold rain, as opposed to the rain from the collision process, which is also known as warm rain. What now can we expect in a changing climate? We have learned from the clausius clapeyron curve that the warmer it gets, the higher the saturation pressure becomes. More water vapor can be stored in the atmosphere before it condenses into liquid or sublimates into ice. So more water is available in the atmosphere for the formation of rainfall. And remember, more water vapor also means more latent heat waiting to be released during condensation, which can drive more convection. All in all, global warming can lead to more rainfall and possibly increase the number of intense rainstorms. Let's have a look at a couple of scenarios. Assume that the statistical probability of temperatures given by Gaussian curve as given in the graph. The probability of extreme temperatures given by the area underneath the tails of the curves. Global warming can change that curve in different ways. The shape of the curve does not change, but the mean temperature becomes larger. This implies that we'll get fewer cold extremes, but more extremes with high temperatures. The mean temperature does not change, but the curve becomes wider. In that case, we, we can expect more hot and more cold extremes. The mean and variance both change. We will certainly get more warm extremes, but the number of cold extremes can both increase and decrease. In all cases, we see that global warming can lead to more warm extremes. We can therefore also expect a larger probability of extreme rainfall. Here we see the average change of the amount of rainfall during the last century. In the blue parts, the globe, global rainfall is increasing. In the brown part, it's decreasing. If we now zoom in on the last 60 years, we see that these changes in rainfall are happening faster than before. Parts of the world have become wetter. Other parts have become drier. We see that the long link between temperature and saturation pressure was important for cloud and rainfall formation. 
But didn't aerosols also play a role? Of course, without aerosols, no droplets. The number of aerosols partly determines the number and size of cloud droplets. More aerosols mean smaller droplets. The collision coalescence process doesn't work so well in case of so many small droplets. It can take much longer than before large droplets are formed. In the meantime, the particles can be transformed to higher and colder altitudes. Ice may be present there, and the bedroom vent ice and processes can begin. In the end, rain is still formed, but it takes longer. The process is different, and the intensity can be higher. We have briefly discussed rainfall formation and how it can be affected by global warming. In a short time, we could only scratch at the surface. Rainfall is of vital importance for mankind. Scientists all over the world are therefore doing their best to understand the physical processes and based on this, come up with scenarios for the future. <laughs>